What's going on? Thanks for checking in. Today we're going over the three best deadlift variations for baseball players. Make sure you stay tuned, check this one out. If you've been following me for a little while, you see that I use a trap bar deadlift with all of my athletes for two main reasons, right? It teaches you to produce a ton of force and it brings your absolute strength up, right? So anytime we're trying to build max strength and max force, we wanna pick an exercise that is easy to teach for one and strays away from some of the mobility limitations that a baseball player would have. Coming in at number one is the simple trap bar deadlift, all right? A lot of guys teach the trap bar deadlift differently. Some guys preach, hey, it should be a hinge, so a pull and then into a hinge. I like to think of it more as a squat to pick it up. They've done muscle EMG testing on this and they show that in order to produce a lot of force, right, the best way to do it is to keep it all in unison and stop doing a hinge in between. If we want to do a hinge, we'll just do an RDL or a kettlebell swing. So how we're going to do this, right? Pretty simple. I use this high rogue trap bar, all right? The other trap bar that you probably have in your gym is this one. This one's 45 pounds right here. This typical one you see, and that rogue one is 65 pounds. However, the reason I like this rogue one is because the handles are preset a little bit higher. So that means he's pulling from a higher joint angle. When guys go to jump elite jumpers, they don't really go down the entire way, right, to jump up. They go down to that positive joint angle, like Texel. Go to where you were able to jump real quick. Right, snap down. So see, he's not going ass the grass here. So a lower grip would put you in a more compromising position. That's why I like this high grip. We're training a lot of force at a high joint angle. So you're gonna set your feet apart, right? Grab the bar first. From here, you're gonna exhale in, breathe in. Next, you're gonna sink your hips down, bring your chest up and pull straight up. Good. Go ahead. Good. Nice, simple as that. The weight is midline of the body close to your center of mass the entire way. Trap bar deadlift is more anterior chain dominant, all right? So you're not gonna hit a lot of posterior chain here if you're doing it right like I want you to do. Squat down, pick it up. Coming in at number two is the sumo deadlift. Yes, I'm a fan of the sumo deadlift even though it's a little bit harder to teach than the trap bar. Why? Because it's a good way to produce lateral force same lateral force that you use in the swing and to start when you go into throw, right? This is a more posterior chain dominant exercise. So how you set this up is all gonna determine on how long your limbs are and then how tall you are. So it's more of a comfortable position, right? The wider your feet go, the more you're gonna have to turn them out. If you come more narrow, you can go ahead and turn those toes in for support. So we're gonna get into a comfortable position just go to the range of motion that you're comfortable with here, you know? So Texel likes to go right outside of these, um, the knots and the knurling, the rings and the knurling it looks like. So from here, he's gonna reach down, he's gonna lengthen. Now he's gonna breathe in, fill up the diaphragm. Now from this position, he's spreading his knees and he's sinking his hips as close as he can to the bar and he's gonna pull straight up, finishing with his shoulders behind his center of mass. Go ahead into another one. Spread those knees, pull close. Nice, hit one more. Good, go ahead and break. To start out, you can go double overhand grip to get the grip strength, all right? But once we start getting heavier, grip's gonna be the limiting factor, so you can go ahead and go switch grip, all right? The goal of this is to get those hips as close as you can to the bar because that's gonna give you more mechanical advantage, make you lift a lot more weight, and make you produce a lot more lateral force. All right, my ultimate favorite is the split stance trap bar deadlift. You know I'm a big single leg guy, right? I believe our sport is unilateral. You have your gas leg, your brake leg. So no better way to produce a lot of force and to build up your absolute strength than a split stance deadlift. Okay, so go ahead and set it up. We're gonna go one leg in front of the other. The back foot is simply going to be a kickstand. This knuckle right here, 
is gonna be in line with the 45 with the uh, sleeve going out, okay? So from this position, you're gonna do the same exact thing. You're gonna breathe in, fill the diaphragm up with air. You're gonna sink your hips down. You're gonna bring your chest up and you're gonna pull straight midline of the body. Good. Good. What I typically see on this is guys get a little bit too wide with their feet. Then this back beam of the trap bar is gonna go ahead and hit that back heel and cause some issues at the foot right there. So make sure you're more of a narrow stance depending on how big your trap bar is. Another mistake I see with this is go ahead and lift the bar up real quick, Texel. This bar starts to rotate forward and back as you get through it. How to fix that is go ahead and just squeeze that pinky as tight as you can so it's gonna stay over the midline of your body, stay nice and neutral throughout the exercise. Let's go ahead, hit one more. Good. So I use this exercise a lot of different ways, right? I like to use it as the first exercise in a potentiation cluster. So you may have seen us go ahead and hit these staggered stance trap bar deadlifts and go right into a, a jump for post-activation potentiation. I also use this exercise alone to build absolute strength. So when I go through my triphasic training, we'll hit eccentrics with this, we'll hit isometrics with this, and then we'll go ahead and hit concentrics with this. So you can do whatever you want with this exercise. It's gonna transfer over to the baseball field unlike any other deadlift I've seen. Hey, that's a wrap, thanks for tuning in. Go ahead and add those three deadlift variations into your training. If you're a baseball or softball player, it's gonna transfer over to the diamond more than any other deadlift variation that you'll do. Also, if you wanna use some of the same training methodologies that I use with my guys in-house, I released an off-season baseball program. It's free to sign up, and then you can stay on for $34 a month. And plus, always remember that I pump out two of these videos per week, so do me a favor and subscribe. I appreciate you, catch you next week. Game rewards the grind, it knows how much you've invested.